Hello gamers, if you clicked on this video, I'm assuming you just started the Corrupted Gauntlet grind for the first time and you're struggling a little bit. You're feeling like you're banging your head against a brick wall with no end in sight. Fortunately for you, after I learned Corrupted Gauntlet last year, I learned to actually really enjoy it. And I'm in the middle of a gauntlet grind myself right now. So I'm going to share a few tips with you guys as well as sort of walk you through my process of getting consistent completions and hopefully by the time you finish watching this video things will make a lot more sense for you and it'll click a lot faster. Real quick before we get into it we're going to want to talk about a couple of plugins here. First off, we have tile indicators. You want to make sure this is downloaded and turned on. And then you want to scroll down in the settings and make sure that the check mark next to highlight true tile is checked. This is going to tell you where your character is according to the server as opposed to where your character is on your screen. This is really important for getting movement down. And as you might know by now, movement is pretty much everything during the Hunlet fight. And real quick, in case you didn't know this about movement, if you're walking, you're covering one tile per game tick. If you are running, you are covering two tiles per game tick. When you're running, you actually skip the tile that's immediately next to you. And this is going to be important later on for one of the tips that I have. And next up, we have the Hunliff Helper. It's a really nice plug-in. Basically, as you walk into the room and attack Hunliff, once, the, once you see the projectile of his first attack coming at you, go ahead and press Start. Pressing it a little earlier gives you extra time to react to it telling you to change your prayer. I, I personally like that. You can do it however you like but that's how I like to do it. I like to have that extra game tick or so to finish whatever else I'm doing, like focusing on movement or changing my weapon and prayers. Now, with all that said, let's get into some example runs. All right, so here we are. And we are doing tier two prep, which means we need seven of each resource instead of three of each resource when you do tier one prep, that's fine. I will be getting seven of each resource, three herbs in total. I'll get two on my first trip around. And then I'll get the third one later on. This is because I like to go into the fight with two potions in order to prevent running out of prayer. Because that can happen. And one of the biggest things I struggled with when I first started learning CG last year was actually the prep. The fight was pretty self-explanatory to me, but... You know, I just I just couldn't make that prep time when I made the transition from regular gauntlet to corrupted. And here we have all of the wood and ore we need. So we mine the last ore, drop the pickaxe, come over here, mine the rest of our wood, and grab this uh, wool. And then we'll drop the axe after we finish chopping these two trees. But the biggest thing like I said, I struggled with was making prep time because I was just slow. And now, in case you haven't noticed, what I do... Ooh, two melee demis. That kind of sucks. But now what I do is just, while I'm collecting a resource, I'm already hovering the next thing I'm going for. That way, as soon as my character finishes up, I can go ahead and start working on the next thing. There's our weapon frame after two kills. That's nice. And the biggest thing here is going to be just keeping a mental note of what you have and what you need. I only need one more wool. And here you can see I am very close to the room, so I'm not going to use my teleport crystal. We can save that for later. But if you end up running pretty far away from the room, which is completely fine, you can still just go ahead and use the teleport crystal and just make another one when you get back here. But for now, we don't have to worry about that. We'll go ahead and make two potions. One to run around with, and one for the fight. Now all we need is food and tier 3 weapons. But I will say that tier 3 weapons are not required at all. You can absolutely kill Hunliff with tier 2 weapons. I do it pretty consistently because I would rather have my tier 2 armor completed and enough food and prayer to get through the fight than get my tier 3 weapons. You will still do plenty of DPS, so I personally don't stress getting my tier 3 weapons. Now all we need is one more food spot because it's nice to go in with a little bit more food than you need. Just in case you make mistakes. 
And then we're going to go ahead and kill this guy because in case anyone doesn't know, you can grind the tier 3 weapon material for 80 shards. In this case, it'll be the Corrupted Spike, which is for the Halberd. And you can say spot these bad boys. There's some extra food right there. That's nice. We'll take that because why not? And I will go ahead and grind this up into 80 more shards. And I almost have everything I need for my tier 2 prep. I just want one more herb to guarantee that I have two full potions for the Hunlift fight. Now, as you can see, we've got almost three and a half minutes left. So I have plenty of time to look for my second tier 3 weapon. I will say, though, I did get pretty lucky with this seed because everything was nice and close to each other. It's really nice, and that's more than enough shards to do tier 2 prep right there. There's our third herb, so we will have two potions going into the Hunlift fight and plenty of food. Usually with tier 2 prep, you can do it with anywhere from 12 to 16. I personally like to go for 16 food just in case I make a bunch of mistakes during the fight, but... Almost 99% of the time, I use 8 to 10 food on my tier 2 preps. And I realize I am on a max combat main account right now, but I followed this exact same process on my group Iron Man with base 80s, like low 80s combat stats, and it, it worked out just fine. So you lower level guys, or well, I guess mid-level guys, you can absolutely do this. I promise it's not that hard. As far as the prep goes, you just need to be constantly running, and that's why I make a third potion. I just I make an extra potion to run around with because if there's ever a point that you're walking in CG, you're not going to make the time. You're just not. And there is a Dark Beast, and we already have the Bowstring, so we will get the Corrupted Orb from this guy, and we will have everything we need to kill Hunliff. And more, because like I said before... Tier 3 weapons are not required. They are a luxury, not a necessity. So we'll go ahead and tell you back because we have everything we need. I'm not going to bother picking up that 5 extra fish. I'm not going to use them or need them. So you go ahead and drop these bad boys right here next to the stove. Finish off this potion. Make a fresh one. And then we drop the harpoon, pestle and mortar, and the corrupted scepter. And grab all of our armor materials. Let's see we've got 15 food that's plenty enough that is plenty like i said before we usually i mean i usually will be using eight to ten give or take it really just depends on if i make mistakes and if hunlift just gets good rng and starts shredding through my tier two armor it's fine but we're gonna go ahead and get started taking less than a minute to prep have prey range and rigor on and i like to start the hunlift helper like i said as the projectile is flying through the air because this gives you an extra game tick or so to react to the, the prayer changes. And I like to have everything in the top there, my potions and, and my weapon switch. Now, if you're struggling with the Hunla fight specifically, one of the biggest things I realized pretty early on actually is that it's best to run in a straight line as much as possible. Because if you're changing directions too much, you are eventually going to get caught by the tornadoes. And we don't want that. It's better to run across the disco floor for a tick or two than it is to get caught by the tornadoes. And that'll get a lot harder during the later phases of the fight, as you probably know, if you've watched any CG before. Here come the naders. And like I said, running in a straight line is ideal. Gives you extra time to react and change prayers and eat food and sip potions and get extra attacks in. 
Because the more damage you do to Hunlif, the faster the kills will be, obviously. Another really big thing here is timing your eats. If you'll notice, I am not just standing here eating when I can be doing free damage to Hunlif. Even though I'm 49 HP and could definitely get stacked out by tornadoes if I get caught by them. But, if you'll notice, while I'm running, that's when I go ahead and eat. Another thing I want you to notice is that I just skipped those tornadoes. They were, sta they were on the tile directly next to me. And like I mentioned earlier in the intro, when you're running, your character will skip across one tile. And that just happened to be the tile that the tornadoes were on. Because you're covering two tiles per game tick when you're running. Also, it's generally not recommended for Hunlift to be in the middle, but I don't care. It does make it a little harder because you will get trampled. And because of that trample, I just messed up that prayer and I'm really lucky I didn't just die. That's, I mean, actually, that's extremely lucky. I genuinely should have just died and then this <laughs> and then it'd be like, well, why are you making this guide? <laughs> you suck at this. All right, I'm going to go ahead and safe up because I don't have much room to run around here with him being in the middle. But like I said, we are running in a straight line as much as we possibly can. That way we can switch weapons, eat food, sip potions, and change prayers with no problems. And you can move Hunliff if you walk under him at the right time. But I personally just... I'm just sending it. Normally I would move Hunliff, but for the example, I want to uh, kind of show you guys how this... How, this how, how to move properly. I don't know why that was so hard to say, but, you know. See, and because I got trampled there, I ended up using way more food than I normally would. It'd just be like that sometimes. We're going to do another example here, though, and hopefully it will be much, much cleaner. All right, so getting into it, we're going to make the circle again. There's food right next to the prep room. That's really nice. I would prefer to have more resources like rocks, wood, and wool in there, but that's fine. We got some wood here. I'm going to come around to this one. I'll go ahead and open this room up just to see what's in there. We got wool and an herb and a fish spot, and that's really nice. I didn't mean to run around here. See, I'm already make making mistakes. Oh, don't want to drop the axe. I got one more wood to get. See, I'm... Hey, man, it's it happens. Now I can drop my axe. Okay, and just like last time, we're doing tier 2 prep, so I am going to be getting 7 of every resource, a total of 3 herbs, and anywhere from 10 to 16 food. That way I have cushion for the Hunlith fight. Mm, I'm going to go ahead and run this way. Like I said, we're just going to run a circle around the prep room for now. And we are missing ore and a weapon frame. So I'm going to be doing a little more running most likely. There's an ore spot. But I still need my weapon frame and four more ores. Counting is hard. Sorry. <laughs> okay, and there's three more ores and potential for a weapon frame right here. And then we have our second and third herbs in this room. Dude, come on. Hit. 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 And I'm actually really glad this has happened because it will show that you can absolutely make it in time. Even if you get a kind of rough seed. Because as you can see... I need one more ore, and I don't have it anywhere. I still need my weapon frame, too. I shouldn't have grabbed that second herb. 
now that I think about it, but that's fine. And right now I have five minutes left and I'm still on my first trip. That's completely fine. I'm probably going to end up having a tier two weapon, maybe both tier two weapons instead of having tier three weapons. So that'll be good. Uh, that'll be good. And as you can see, I still do not have rocks. We are definitely not going to be able to get both tier three weapons and that is completely fine. All right, we drop the Grim Leaf, get our last rock, pick that bad boy back up, and Tully out to the prep area. And we'll drop everything right here in front of the crafting bowl, the singing bowl. Make a tier two weapon, two potions, and that. Uh, teleport seed just in case we need it. Make the potions, and I don't have enough shards to make my potions but that's fine for right now all i need right now all i'm looking for right now is food and shards and just bear in mind this kill is probably going to take longer since i won't be getting tier three weapons at least two three two tier three weapons like I said before, we want three potions in total because we want to have one to run around with because at any point in CG, if you are walking, you are not making time. And as you can see, I am down bad for some shards. So I'm going to go over here. Kill this, kill this demi boss. He'll drop some shards and the corrupted bowstring for me. Because it is nice to have at least one of your tier 3 weapons. But once again, not a necessity. It is a luxury. And then I have to find a couple more things to kill for shards. Because I am extremely low on shards. It's terrible. Go ahead and kill these rats. Say it, rat. We got two and a half minutes left. This is getting a little, this one's getting dicey, but we just got our higher level spawns and our last herb. So it looks like we are going to be just fine. There's 102 shards. That's a really nice drop. And I'm not too concerned about conserving prayer because like I said, extra pot. I'll go ahead and sip it. And then when I get back to the prep room, I will have plenty of everything I need. And while I have this time left, I am going to go ahead and look for the Corrupted Dragon just very briefly. If I don't find it in this room, I'll go ahead and telly back. Yep, he's not there. So I'm going to telly back, make another potion. And then I will drop my food here in front of the stove, just like last time. We have 16 food two potions, and our tier two prep with a tier three bow. Okay, and I want you to pay attention to how I do this. Hunlith is protecting from melee right now. So what I'll do is I'll start off using the bow, and then after five hits, I will switch to the staff since it's my weaker weapon, and that will prompt him to change to protect from mage instead of protect from range and then i can use my tier 3 bow to do more damage per second i'm sorry did i say yeah five hits five hits so i'll do four hits with the bow and then change to the staff okay and like i said before projectile flying through the air start the helper that way you have an extra game tick to react I'll go ahead and throw the bow on. He's protecting from mage. So I can use my bow instead of the staff. Because I want to use the bow as much as possible. Since it's my tier 3 weapon. I'm just going to get the most damage that way. And 
But even then, the tier two is fine. It'll still do damage. Whoops. Didn't mean to do that. You see that yellow click? That could have got me killed, man. This early in the fight, too? Come on. <laughs> Get it together, bro. That's fine. Like I said, we've got plenty of food to make mistakes. And just like before, we want to run in a straight line as much as humanly possible because it gives us plenty of opportunity to eat food, sit potions, and change prayers. As you can see, I'm clicking, I'm making sure to do my, do everything a lot slower this time around. I'm not, you know, sweating for this kill or anything like that. I'm just, I'm just, I'm straight up reclined right now. <laughs> like, but I'm doing that to kind of show that you don't have to click at lightning speed in order to get kills. Especially considering you only have one gear switch. Obviously, you want to do everything in a somewhat timely fashion, but you don't have to be clicking at lightning speed to get your kills. Alright, we're on the last phase. Movement is going to start getting a lot dicier now, but since Hunliff isn't in the middle, it is going to be a lot easier than the last kill. And as you can see, I have already used way less food on this kill than I did last time. Like I said, we want to run in a straight line as much as possible to juke the tornadoes. Whoop. Also, I have this tile marked right here because the third tile out from any door is pretty much going to be your best spot to stand and just do damage during the last phase of the fight because as you can see these tiles get hit a lot less frequently with the disco floor than others and there's the uh the little tornado skip there again just showcasing that you can wait for one of them to get to the ne tile next to you and basically just skip over it because of how movement works in the game. Hurry up and die, you bitch. Bruh. <laughs> he's like 1 or 2 HP right now, actually. Yeah, he's dead. I knew it. He was 1 HP. And there you go. I mean, that's, you know, that's how you do CG. It's really not hard once you get it down. It's mainly just, you have to get into the rhythm of it. And if it's been a while for you, it's definitely a perishable skill. When I first started coming back here a couple weeks ago, well, really earlier this week, I really struggled at first. I died probably five or six times before I got my first kill again. But now, ever since then, it has been smooth sailing for me. I just want to let it be known here. When you're first learning CG, it's gonna feel like you're banging your head against a brick wall. It It's it's hard. It's genuinely really hard to learn, just like Zora was. But once you have it down and you get into the rhythm of it, you will be golden. I promise you. You will only die every once in a while when you make one of those typical like human error kind of mistakes. But anyways, I really hope this helps you guys, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you for watching. Drop a like and a subscription. I love you, and I'll see you soon.